For weeks I am saying we need to see more of what is going on outside of Westview. To add context and to understand the threat level. With the title this week being We Interrupt This Program, I was immediately thinking, do they really interrupt the sitcom format and give us a whole episode about the outside world? And they did. But did that help the show and answer our questions? Hi there, it's Micha. Come in and find out. Now that's what I'm talking about. This week is finally shedding some light on what is going on by showing us what happens outside of Wonder Vision's sitcom reality. The fourth chapter of the show is completely focusing on that. Let's see how much this will inform our theories and perception of things. As I'm not an expert on Marvel comics, I will continue to offer my two cents from the MCU perspective of things and look up some theories and Easter eggs from the web, as long as those are not obviously spoilers for future episodes. Here we go again. This episode starts at that point in the Phase 3 timeline where the Hulk used the Infinity Gauntlet to bring back everyone that vanished due to Thanos' snap five years before. We witness Monica Rambeau being put back together in the exact reverse way we saw so many people turn to flakes in Infinity War. She awakes in a hospital room besides an empty bed, where her mother lay five years before. Confused, she leaves the room, searching for her mother, just to see people around her everywhere to dis disintegrate. Or is it just integrate then? You get the point. Though this is a happy occasion, it results in utter chaos, as no one is aware they were gone, what happened and how much time has passed. And everyone else is also completely caught by surprise about the lost souls reappearing. A doctor who previously treated her mother recognizes her. Being confused herself, she manages to bring Monica up to speed, making her understand that she was gone for five years. Three weeks later at the S.W.O.R.D. headquarters, she's the first agent to return back to work after being gone, ready to get back into space, where she previously had most of her assignments. We learn that her mother has created the organization based on her knowledge about aliens she gained during the events of Captain Marvel. Due to a protocol her mother put in place after the snap, or as it seems to be referred to now, the blip, vanished agents that return have to stay earthbound for an extended period, so her first task leads Monica to support the FBI, who requested technical support from S.W.O.R.D. to investigate a missing persons case and strange occurrences in a small town in New Jersey, Westview. There she meets FBI agent Jimmy Wu, who shows her that no one who is familiar with the town seems to remember it, even when standing at its welcome sign. Agent Wu is played by Randall Park, who reprises his role as FBI agent within the MCU. We previously saw him as Scott Lang's handler in Ant-Man and the Wasp. I'll be seeing you again. Where? Like, in general. Oh, I thought you were inviting me somewhere. When they send the helicopter drone into Westview, it vanishes behind a barrier. <sighs> what is it? Some sort of... energy field. When she touches the energy field... Captain Rambo. Watch it. Rambo gets sucked in, also vanishing from sight. Enter Darcy Lewis, again portrayed by Kat Dennings, who we know as the research assistant from the Thor movies, now a full-fledged doctor of astrophysics. She is called in by S.W.O.R.D. alongside experts from other fields to find out what is going on. Apparently every government agency in existence has set up camp outside Westview, so things are busy and intelligence sharing is scarce. But Darcy has an immediate connection with Agent Wu. While S.W.O.R.D. sends in an agent through the sewer systems, Darcy notices a lot of cosmic radiation, with another signal embedded in there. With an old TV set, she can decipher the signal. How are you? Is that? <laughs> it looks like her. You move at the speed of sound and I can make a pen float through the air. Which shows Wanda and Vision in a 50s TV sitcom setting. Look, I know it's been a crazy few years on this planet, but he's dead, right? Not blipped, dead. You, what is this? Where is this coming from? Out there, 
My equipment registered an extremely high level of CMBR. That's... Relic radiation dating back to the Big Bang. Yeah. Entwined was a broadcast frequency. Voila, sound and picture. Which makes Wu say... So you're saying the universe created a sitcom starring two Avengers? It's a working theory. With facial recognition software and manual research, the team can, bit by bit, identify most of the other characters appearing in the sitcom. All real people from Westview cast in different roles with different names. And among those, they also discover Monica, apparently unaware of her real persona. As Darcy and Jimmy prepare to send in a signal to one of the radios, you remember the scene in Dottie's garden? They receive word that the drone showed up inside, still in color, as found by Wanda in the bushes in episode 2, but in a different shape, likely to adjust to the production design of the 60s. Their try to contact Wanda appeared to be successful at first, but then there seems to be a sensor cut in the sitcom feed, hiding that the Wanda, can you read me? Who's doing this to you? went through, as we know from said episode. Meanwhile, the agent in the sewer passes through the barrier and transforms into the beekeeper that then emerges from the manhole in front of Wanda and Vision's eyes. Again, adjusting appearances to the setting inside the bubble. Watching the 70s episode, they hear Monica mentioning Ultron, resulting in a threatening look from Wanda. But when they look closer, another sensor cut happens. Rambo has disappeared and the credits are setting in. As an alarm rings outside, the camera pushes into the TV screen and we see what really happened, with the sitcom setting opening up to a cinemascope framing, as the rest of the show was, but in juxtaposition to previous shots inside Westview. Here Wanda is, fully aware for a moment, questioning Monica before using her magic to cast her out, by pushing her through the walls and all the way to the barrier. Then Wanda comes to, looking like awaking from or falling back into a trance, not understanding what just happened. She closes the hole in the walls and sits down. As Vision comes in, she sees him for a moment as a husk of himself, grey face, dead eyes and a hole in his forehead, where Thanos has taken out the Mind Stone, before he is his normal self again. To Vision's again surfacing uncertainty about the place, she responds with, no worry. I have everything under control. A sentiment mirrored by Monica Rambeau, who wakes up outside Westview, saying that it was all Wanda's doing. The show ends with Wanda and Vision sitting down and the format returning from widescreen to the familiar 4x3 ratio of the sitcom setting. Finally, we saw the other side of the mirror, as this episode has shown some light on the mystery. Not that it really solved much, which would be too early anyway but it presented a long overdue catch up with the outside world. I was hoping for a little bit more balance between what happens inside and out, but I never anticipated a full episode playing just outside. But it makes sense, as now episode 5 will cover the 80s, 6 the 90s and so on, until episode 9 will have us arrive in the now. However, I hope for a solid balance of both sides going forward, and not just returning to 99% sitcom starting up again next week. It's a sitcom. I think Disney should have at least dropped the first four episodes at once. That way they would have avoided a lot of weird responses to the show from viewers. Especially casual viewers, who will likely have a tough time with the recurring characters and storylines, like the reverse snap. A lot of MCU movie knowledge is a prerequisite. By the way, I loved how they finally showed the confusion and panic that went hand in hand with all people being snapped back into existence. On both sides, the returning people and the people suddenly confronted with them. Something that so far only happened off screen and they conveniently never discussed much. But that was definitely a big question in the back of our minds. I guess this will be a big topic in phase 4, as not everyone may have parked their lives for 5 years. Now let's look at what we have learned this week for a fact. We know, even though that was pretty clear from the get go, that the stuff that arrived in living color was indeed sent from the outside the drone and the agent that morphed into a beekeeper. That all was sent in by S.W.O.R.D., same as Geraldine turned out to be S.W.O.R.D. agent Monica Rambeau. So everything that comes in from the outside needs to adapt to the inside. And we know that it was Darcy who watched the TV at the end of episode 1, and that Jimmy Woo was the voice on the radio in chapter 2. We know that Westview is a real place, filled with real people, who are apparently under mind control, to fit into Wanda's vision, pun intended, of Westview. 
And yes, everyone seems to be sure that she is in control, which is plausible, but the reason is still unknown. We just don't know what to expect. We know that the bubble is not expanding and that the alternate reality is not just happening in Wanda's head while she's in a coma or such things. This is really happening. Though even Darcy can't answer why it is in form of a sitcom. I don't know, I don't know, and I don't know. What do you know? We can also be pretty certain that Wanda really forgets what is real for most of the time, also for reasons unknown. Maybe so she can better buy into her own fantasy? Today's episode suggests that Vision is dead. So likely Wanda brought his mutilated body there and can only keep him alive in the bubble? But why? Why not just a bubble around Vision? And why in Westview? We also learned that we just saw the relevant episodes of a TV show, that there are many more episodes that were broadcasted. Like a real show, you know? And hilariously, Jimmy had pretty much the same questions for Darcy and on his whiteboard that we came up with along the lines like minds. But will it become relevant that one person inside is in the witness protection program? The one Agent Wu was originally sent to recover? And if so, who is it? Is it relevant that Agnes is not identified yet? Or is she the witness and hence no identity was assigned? Agnes could still be Agatha Harkness, Wanda's real witch mentor from the comics, which would be also an explanation why she is not identified yet. Or even both may be true. Maybe Wanda created the whole facade to protect her, or whoever the witness is. Maybe she came to Westview to protect that person and could only do so by hiding the person and the whole town from everyone's memory. And Vision just showed up as well, in a happy but cruel twist of fate. And she can now not let go of him. Maybe there is a way to save Vision, she just never had the clear head to think about it. Yet, as that was not initially intended. Are you crying? I'm invested. We still are not sure about the reason for the bubble, especially since we don't know how strong and powerful Wanda really is. If she's almost almighty, she could just will Vision into existence. But maybe she tried and only managed to do it in this form? In a regional setting? We know now more about the stakes, but still have no clue what would happen if Vision finds out all is fake. Is this just Wanda's illusion she wants to keep going? Or is there a real possibility to bring Vision permanently back to life? It still could be that Vision's essence is at play, extracted from a fragment of the Mind Stone. Or, as I said before, the real body and all is in line to reboot Vision. Basically, all our previous theories are still possible. The two remaining big questions, how was the field created and to what effect? Even though all is pointing to Wanda being the villain, which she might be to a certain degree, I still think all serves a purpose and will be revealed in the end. Keep in mind that so far she only kicked out the intruders, even letting them keep their memories of the inside. The solution will likely explain it all away. Let's check out what theories the internet has in store for us. Since this episode didn't touch on the 80s sitcom theme as expected, a lot of the theories online are the same I already covered in last week's video. While I also checked off a lot of the stuff people noticed this week on my own. One big theory that keeps popping up is around Monica's boss, Tyler Hayward, who has the same last name as a Hydra agent in season 1 of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So there are theories that he intentionally sent Monica there to get rid of her, and that he is always off screen talking to his masters at Hydra. Also, the hexagons that keep popping up lead some viewers to the conclusion that they represent the number 6 and by extension 666, aka the number of the beast. This is supposed to foreshadow a big villain from the comics to make his introduction, Mephisto, a demon working for the devil himself. As he is often an adversary of Doctor Strange, he might be the big bad in that movie, explaining Wanda's appearance there. Both series may be true at the same time, if Hydra now serves Satan, and both might be valid reasons why Wanda is hiding the town from everyone, adding to my theory that Wanda initially created the bubble to protect the witness which even more likely can now be Agatha Harkness, a witch with centuries of knowledge. Well, so much about internet theories. Let's look at the rating. I was pretty happy with this episode. I hoped they would show more outside details and kick it up a notch, and they did both, even more than expected. A play-by-play -play what happened until now. Not really solving much, but explaining a lot by setting context. No fluff and much substance. I will rate this one with 8 out of 10. 
if the next episodes don't reverse to 98% sitcom, but find a good balance, this rating is easy to uphold or even surpass. How did you like this one? What are your theories? Let me know in the comments. That's it. As always, if you enjoyed this video, like it and feel free to share it with your friends. And why not subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any future video. Make sure to also hit the notification bell so you get a heads up whenever a new video is posted. So much for now, see you next time and thanks for watching.